Good morning, Morabi Rabotai. We are continuing on Shukha Aruch Rachaim, Siman, Samech. And we are towards the end. And Seif Dalit, we started the important Seif of whether or not mitzvot tzrichot kavana. In other words, when you are saying Shema, whether or not you have to just have the intentfulness of understanding the words that you're saying, Shema Israel, which, which means, you know, Shema Bekol Asher Shatashomea, or they actually have to understand the words that you're, um, you're saying, or maybe aside from understanding or lack thereof, of the words that you're saying, well, you have to have kavana intent that I am hereby doing a mitzvah doraita. Not just that I'm saying beautiful words of Shema, um, but I'm actually saying something that constitutes a mitzvah doraita because it says, and maybe even if I had all the kavana in the world, with I mamash said the Shema with Perush Rashi, and I learned all the Rambans on it, and so on. And I said it, but I had no kavana whatsoever that this is a mitzvah doraita, a daily mitzvah, but rather I mean, studying a part of the Torah with the Farshim, maybe you not you'll say altogether because for mitzvah to count, you have to have mitzvah, um, mitzvah tzirchot kavana, you have to have intent that I am actually mindful of being right now involved with an action that constitutes a mitzvah. So that is a machloket that Maran brings over here, and Maran paskins mitzvot tzirchot kavana. The, the read of it is, yesh omrim, She'en mitzvot tzirichot kavara, there are those who hold that as, as long as you're doing the mitzvah, you don't need to have intent that this is a mitzvah. You're doing it. You're saying shema. You don't have to have in mind necessarily that this is fulfillment of what it says, mm-hmm. mishok of gumecha in the Torah. And that's the shitav to Safot. That's the shitav of Rabbeinu Yonah. And on the other hand, you have those who disagree. with yesh omrim she'strichot kavara. There are those who say, um, mitzvot do need kavana. That's the shita of the bahag bala lachok gedolot. The shita of the rosh and many other rishonim says the, the shulchan aruch. The halacha, the halacha follows the stringent shita. Latzed basiyat ota mitzvah vechen halacha. Maran paskins the halacha is like the set, second shita. Now. Says the Mishnah Bura, we mentioned before that there, there is that you do need intent to be your saying in a mitzvot srichot kavana. They do need kavana. Now, we mentioned before that maybe there is a difference between rabbinic mitzvot, mitzvot rabbanan, and mitzvot oraita. The shita of Mishnah Bura, for instance, is Hafez Chaim holds that even a mitzvot rabbanan needs kavana. And what does it mean, needs kavana? Says the Mishnah Burai in Ot Chet, Shtrichot Kavana, Im lo kiven la tzedi da chuvato ba'asiyat ha mitzvah, lo yatsa min ha Torah. If you didn't have that intent, that here I am standing right now about to say Shema Yisrael in Shaharit, and that's a fulfillment of a mitzvah that you have to say this parasha or parashiot every morning and every night. If you didn't have that in mind, you're not the Yotzei, you have to do it again. Right? Is it a consistent kavana that you're doing the mitzvah, or just once you have it, right before you do it, and that's enough? Should you be? No, beforehand is fine. As long as as long as you had you had that in mind, um, then it's it's an obligation, and you had that in mind. That's fine. Now that's for a mitzvah that's an obligation to do it. That you you not yotze. It's a mitzvah that's a chiyuv on the person, an obligation on a person to do, right? But um, if you have a mitzvah that is ben adam lechaviro, right? Interpersonal mitzvot that you have, right? So you, you, you need to have kavana there, right? So Chachamadia writes that you could even do it without kavana and still is considered a mitzvah because the outcome, the tachlit of the mitzvah is really the mechuvan, is what we want. And since you do it, um, and you're helping the society, so to speak, that is the fulfillment of, of the mitzvah that, that you need to do, and therefore it is fine. Now, says the Mishnah Buram, 
ואפילו אם ספק לא אם כיוון, even if you have doubt, you don't remember, did I have כוונה, did I have כוונה? A biblical mitzvah, we mention always ספק דאורייתא לחומרה, when you have ספק, a doubt in the Torah, מצוות, then you have to be stringent, ספק על החומרה, כן כתב הפרי מגדים, that's what the פרי מגדים writes, that's also what כף החיים writes, יעקב חיים סופר, יעקב החיים also writes that, חכם עובדיה is a little bit more lenient, it says if you have ספק, um, whether or not you have כוונה, you could be, um, you don't have to go back and do the mitzvah again, because you have ספק ספיקה over you, maybe הלכה is like those who say מצוות ספיקות כוונה, maybe not, maybe מצוות don't need כוונה, even though that מרן פסקינס, that they do, still you can use it for ספק ספיקה, which is, without getting too much into the depth of a complicated סוגיה, חכמובדיה holds that you could use for ספק ספיקה, you could use even a ספק that's against that מרן. So even though that Maran Paskin is black and white, halacha, not like that, Maran Paskin is black and white, that mitzvot do need kavana, at least in the Doraita, you could use the shita of the Tosafot and of the Rabbi Riyora, that mitzvot don't need kavana for formation of a suffix sefeka. So how does suffix sefeka work? It's a double doubt. Double doubt means Maybe Allah is like Tosafot and Yitzvot don't need Kavana. And even if you want to say Allah is like the Bahag and the Rosh that they do need Kavana, maybe I did have Kavana. I don't remember. Maybe I did have Kavana. So therefore, that's a Safek Safeka, a double doubt. There's also a Machloket Rishonim, a debate within the medieval authorities. How, how does the formulation of Safek Safeka, um, the mechanism, work? And there are those who say safek safeka is because of rov. Rashba holds like that. In other words, imagine if we will make it simple. Let's give it numbers of 50-50. Imagine both of the doubts are a 50-50, right? So we have a 50-50 uh, doubt. Mitzvot need kavana or not need kavana. And then on top of that, we have another 50-50 chance that I had kavana or I didn't have kavana. So if you do the statistical uh, analysis of this, you would end up with 75% chance that I did, and that's Rove. So we go after Rove, we go after majority. The majority chance is that I did uh, fulfill my mitzvah of Shema because maybe mitzvah don't need intent altogether. So then I did it because I said the words. And even if they do need intent, maybe I had it. So it's a 75% chance that I did my obligation. You're good to go. That's how the Rashba understands it. Again, without getting into too many, too much details, the Rambam understands it a little bit differently. The Rambam holds that when we say, when the Gemara says, Safek do raita lechumra, when, when we say that the doubt in a biblical matter, you go lechumra, you go, you, you, you go to the stringent side, that by itself is a halakha the Rabbanan. Listen well. In other words, from the Torah perspective, if I have a doubt, I could be lenient. So why do we say safek doraita lechumra? That is that quotation safek doraita lechumra is a rabbinic halacha. Really, from the Torah itself, when you have safek, you could be lenient, right? It's not it's not vatai. But Chachamim came along and said, "Well, you don't want to play with fire, dealing with it." A potential biblical problem is playing with fire. So whenever you have doubt in Torah, be machmir. But who said that? Rabbanim. So if you have a doubt on top of that, then it's a safek de Rabbanan. Because to be stringent in a safek de Oraita is a halacha de Rabbanan. So if I have a doubt on top of that, that second doubt is a doubt in a rabbinic halacha. And we all know that safek de Rabbanan the kula. So therefore, that's how Rambam understands how suffix fika operates. So therefore, if I have doubt whether or not misfot srikhut kavana, right? We say, well, suffix duraita la kubra. Good, I understand that. But Rambam says that, which means that you have to go back and say, if you for sure didn't have kavana in Shema, you have to go back and say Shema again. That is midra banan. Now, if I also on top of that have a doubt, maybe I had Kavana, I don't remember, maybe I did, then that's already a Safek the Rabbanan, and you're allowed to be making.
But again, be that as it may, this has a very wide and far-reaching nafkamina. How this this works? A lot of a lot of yeshiva world Torah is written on this subject of suffix fika, but without getting again too much into the depth of it. If you have if you have a double doubt, even though the one of them is against Maran, you could be lenient and you don't have to go back and say it again. Not like Kafachaim. So Kafachaim says you have to go back and do it again. Kahobadia says in this case, you don't have to go back and say Shema again. So it says the Mishnah Buram, that's it. This that you have, um, you have to have Kavana to be Yotze. Imagine someone is blowing shofar, but he's blowing shofar to learn. Right? He's try, he's practicing. Or you're saying with Amazon with your seven-year-old, nine-year-old child that is chinuch. You're trying to educate them for benching, so you say it to them. They sing it to teach the kid, but you're saying the words. But you have absolutely no intent to say your own benching. You're just teaching the child benching, or you're practicing shofar to perfect your skills of blowing shofar. And imagine it happened to be Rosh Hashanah, or it happened to be that you ate suda and you need benching. And afterwards, you say, oh, gee, I actually did a, a good tashrat, tasha, tarat, good blowing of shofar. Or I just went through the entire singing of benching with my kid. So maybe that should be considered my own. I forgot that I had to bench myself. I didn't bench. So, but I just benched. But did I? Right? Says the Chafetz Chaim. He then realized that, oh, I, I ate a sandwich also. I needed Birkat Amazon. And he had absolutely no idea when he was saying it with the kid, he was just being mechanech, his child. And all of similar cases to these two examples, for all the mitzvot that you did it for a different reason, and he had no intent. For instance, you are um, checking a Sefer Torah to, to make sure it's kasher, you're a sofer. And you're reading, and it's early morning, and you get to Parashat Shema, and you read as you're, you know, you're checking the Sefer Torah, you read the whole Shema. But he had no intent. And it comes out afterwards, say, well, I'm in a rush, I have an emergency, I have to run, I'm not going to make Shema. But I just said Shema. But did I? I didn't have Kavana for saying Shema. I just was checking a Sefer Torah. You have not fulfilled your obligation. You must say it again. Or you I must blow shofar again. Or, or listen to someone blow shofar again. Taz goes a step further. And it says this Birkat Amazon case that we said, the guy singing in Amazon with his kid, even according to the lenient mandamar that holds mitzvot and srichot kavara, still you're not yotze. Why, says the Taz? Because it's as if you have kavana directly that you don't want to be yotze. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. You could. For chinuch, you could say it, yeah. For teaching, you could say it. But if you have two kavanot, you want to do the checking of Sefer Torah, but you're mindful that it's time for Shema. So you say, well, I killed two birds with one stone. Or I'm going to be saying Birkat Amazon with my kid, but I just remembered that I also ate a sandwich. So I'm going to sing it with him, but I'm going to have in mind that I'm doing two things. I'm doing Chinuch, and I'm saying benching myself. I'm Checking the Sefer Torah, but I'm saying Shema also says, um, says the Mishnah Burah, then Yatza, then you are Yotze. You could, you could actually accomplish both of them at the same time. And then when, when Maran says, when Maran uh, paskins and concurs with the 
stringent shita that mitzvot do need kavana indeed. The Mishnah Bura writes in Ot Yud, Katav Hamagen Abraham Meshem Marat Baz Bezeh Davka Be Mitzvah Doraita. This is very becomes very important. The Magen Abraham, Rabbi Abraham Aboli, he is one of the greatest names in the list of Acharonim, especially in those who have commented on the Shukharuch. In the regular print of Shukharuch, we have Magen Abraham on Rachaim on every page. Magen Abraham is a tremendous weight in the um, in the Poskei Acharonim. So he brings from the Radbaz, Rabenu David ben Zibra, who, generally speaking, he was the bridge between the, the time, the era of Rishonim and Acharonim, so about 600 years ago. He lived a very long and, and fruitful life. He was for 50 years, he was the Nagid in Mitzrayim. He was the last of the Nagidim in Mitzrayim. Rambam was the first one. Rambam was the one that became the official doctor of the palace of the, the, the King Salah Adin, And he gave him, King Salah Adin gave him an official title as the Nagid. It was like the Rash Galuta in the time of the Gemara. He had power within the Jewish community, Mita'ama Melech, from the office of the king, so to speak. So he could do things actually. He had the power of, of you know, jailing people, enforcing things. And Rambam actually used that to every last bit of, of the power that he had in order to bring back the Torah to, to, the, to the community. He writes himself that if it wasn't because of him and Rapsadia Gaon, uh, the entire community of that region would become Karaites. He used it to, to enforce Tevilah of Nida, many other things that he used it for. So he was the first Nagid. His son, Rabbi Abraham, became the second Nagid. His grandson became the third Nagid. Then he went out of the family of Rambam. And every generation, they, they had a Nagid. The last of which was Rabbi David ben Zira, a.k.a. Radbaz. Radbaz, um, you know, was, was for 50 years the Nagid of time. Then he moved to Eretz Israel at age, um, it was over 90 years old already when he moved to Eretz Israel. And it overlapped with the time of Maran. Maran, of course, was much younger, but they were together in Eretz Israel, and Maran would sign him off on all the public notices in order to show that he is the Gadol Ador. So he was like a bridge between the, the Rishonim and Achim. So again, Abraham brings from the Ratbaz that this that we say, Mitzvot Tzirichot Kavana, is only by Biblical Mitzvot, only by Mitzvot Doraita. But Mitzvot Darabanan and Tzirich Kavana. Mitzvah Rabbanan, if you did it without, of course, the Chathila, you should. But if you did a Mitzvah Rabbanan without Kavana, you get to go, no problem. But if he's a Kona Brachot Shem Gamken the Rabbanan, Nebar Birkat Amazon, all the other Brachot that are the Rabbanan, aside from Birkat Amazon, they're the Rabbanan. So if you didn't have intent, you didn't have Kavana, if you didn't have Kavana, you didn't have Kavana, you still have Kavana, if you didn't have Kavana, you still have Kavana. Ach mikama mekomot veshulcha aruch, but says the Mishnah Bura, that's Magen Abraham in the name of Radbaz. But from many places in Shukharuch itself, you see mashma shehu cholek al It's mashma, you see, it infers from the language of Shukharuch in several places that Shukharuch itself does not agree with this. And he holds that even by the Rabbanans, Mitzvot Tzirichot Kavana. Vechen mi veuragra, and also from the Vilna Gaon in Siman Tafetet, from Lagaon also you see that there's no difference between Mitzvah Rabbanan and Mitzvah Doraita. Both of them need Kavana. You need Kavana in Mitzvah Rabbanan as well. Now, Chacham Obadia explains this Machloket that it may be actually hinging on a different Machloket of scheme if the mitzvot zrichot kavana is a is a din de oraita or a din de rabbanan ramam that we just mentioned before, right? So that according to those who hold the mitzvot zrichot kavana is a, a halacha de oraita, then even mitzvot de rabbanan needs kavana, right? But if you say mitzvot zrichot kavana is by itself the, the rabbanan mid oraita mitzvot don't need kavana, then Mitzvot Rabbanan is a double Rabbanan, right? That would be a, too much of a chidush. Therefore, he says, um, according to those, th those poskim, Mitzvot Rabbanan do not need Kavana. Now, the Mishnah Burah seems, seems here to say, again, as we mentioned before, that Chafetz Chaim Paskins like Shukha Aruch, unlike 
the Vilna Gaon, not like the Radbaz and the Rabbah. If you read the, the flow of the language of Vishtabura, you will see that Chafetz Chaim is siding with the Shukharuch elsewhere and with the Vilna Gaon in Siman Kaf Petet, that Mitzvot the Rabbanan also need Kavana, right? But nevertheless, the, the, the Rafalim, the Benishchai, in his Shuvot also pass things like that. But the Ornetzion says the Ikar, ikar Halacha is that Mitzvot the Rabbanan do not need Kavana, and Chacham Ubadiyah also um, sides with that from, from the simple language of Chacham Ubadiyah. Also, you see that, so therefore it's Machlok at Aposkim, Mishnah Burra, the Benish Chai, the Machmir, that even by a Mitzvah the Rabbanan, you need Kavana. So it's important that even, even in, in the regular Brachot that the person has, it should have intent that when you have, when you have an obligation and you say Bracha on it, it should be worth a proper intent, even though that the brachot are the rabbana. So it says, let's just finish this if. So says, even though that I'm telling you that this what the rabbana need kavana, but you won't go and say the bracha again because for that you have to be a choshesh, you have to be concerned for bracha lebatala, safek bracha lebatala even. Right, because according to those that, that hold mitzvot don't need kavana, you were yotze already. So why are you saying the bracha again? When you have doubt in brachot, safek brachot, laken, and therefore, especially for sefaradim, the Maran paskins like Rambam, that saying an unnecessary bracha is a violation of a Torah law, uh, a doraita of lotisach v'shavuot and therefore, an unnecessary bracha should not be said. And that's only when you were not conducting a mitzvah. But if you were busy trying to do a mitzvah, right? Someone that ate matzah, for instance, or taka, or he blew shofar, or natal lulav, or on the first day of Sukkot, he took lulav and a throat, right? Afal pishelo kiven latzed yatsa. Even though that he didn't have kavanah to be yotze, when you're busy doing the mitzvah itself, you're yotze. Why? Why is he doing it if he's not doing it for being, being yotze? Why in the world, early morning, you would pick up some some branch of some tree and start moving it around. Why are you doing that? You have no ulterior motive. You only reason is you're trying to do a mitzvah. Why would you get up in the morning and and, and strap a box and some 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 black straps on your arm and on your head? You have no ulterior motive, right? In a regular when you're attempting to do the mitzvah or you know fara no shashana. But if you are practicing Shofar, or you are practicing Tefillin, or you are saying with your child, which gives you ulterior motive why you're saying it, that's when we say that if you didn't have in mind, you're not Yotze, right? Well, eating, hopefully people eat, um, unless, unless Matzah is something that you would never eat alone on your own, People who eat crackers or matzah during the year year round as well, then they have a bigger problem because this is a regular food that you eat every day, right? So it becomes more of a problem. But if it's something that you would never never have, so the fact that you're going out of your way to have it is considered by itself um, enough sufficient kavana for doing the mitzvah. So it says the Mishnah Bura. Let's finish this this, this few lines. When you look at the person and based on the scenario, you put everything together, what, you, what your eyes are seeing is a person attempting to do a mitzvah. That he's doing is in order to do a mitzvah. Even though they didn't have in mind directly, it's still Yosef. But if it's stam, just 
doing it for learning, doing it for fun, doing it to, to say because I was over with your kid, those we have motive other than the mitzvah, and therefore you would not be your say if you didn't intentfully have it in mind. And this is a Tosafot in Sukkah. That's all with the Evan. If it already happened, of course, even if it's Rabbanan, in every case, before every mitzvah, a person should have kavara to be your This is what all the Achronim agree with, and they bring in their Sfarim, and he quotes a few sources, and therefore, the Sfaradim. Have them in heart that they say the Shem Yehud. Right? The Shem Yehud doesn't have to be long. Some of them, like you see, you take a look at the, the Shem Yehud before benching is a whole paragraph. It doesn't have to be that long. So really, enough time you have to say, Zuman, Oraita, That's it. We know the Shem Yehud. You could just say, or you could say it in, in your own language. You could say it in English. I'm hereby saying Mikad Amazon. Mikad Oraita. Right? You want to say Kiddush? You want to say Kiddush, you, you say to yourself and to the people around, say, Rabotai, we're doing a Misada Oraita of Kiddush on Friday night, a Misada Rabbanan of Kiddush and, and wine. So I have, I have in mind, that's that one sentence that you say, or you think it to yourself, that's sufficient usually to keep you in check, to make sure that your, your mind doesn't wander, that you're just doing it because you're doing it. But you have Kabbalah. You say the Shem, that's a it's a good thing to do, yes, of course. Again, especially if you say Mitzvot Rabbanan, Niv Kavana. So all of these things are Mitzvot Rabbanan. And you should be saying it, L'Chathila. Now, but yeah, but you could argue that, well, why in the world would I leave my job and run to shul to stand uh, by my shtender and shackle for five minutes thinking about my business, right? Hopefully not. But But if... If I'm doing it, it's because I, I'm davening, and, uh, and that's mukhah. You could say that, but on, on the other hand, it's not l'chathila. Uh, l'chathila, a person should have kavanah, but Hashem will continue this in the days to come. Uh, 